so we have a hurricane that's heading right for us. It's Friday. Um, it's due to hit us Monday, and we've got a few options. We either get pulled out again, or there's a couple little anchorages that we can hope we can tuck behind. Uh, but I'll have Bill explain that in a little bit. Call to order the first meeting uh, for Hurricane Nora for developing an action plan. We feel as if we have four options. We just came up with a new option. So the first option is to stay where we are, uh, double our lines, take all the precautions, take the sails down, uh, and be prepared for what uh, would be a Tuesday event. The second option would be to pull the boat, pull it out, put it on the hard. Uh, we have a special slip there where we can tie it down and uh, weather out the storm. That would have to happen tomorrow. Third option, crew, is to uh, pull the boat uh, Monday if there's no wind. So if the wind does not come up uh, and we can get the boat pulled on Monday morning, that would reduce us to a three-day stay on the heart. Um, 3B is if there is wind, uh, we could, and they've been recommended by a bunch and everybody else that's here is gonna anchor out. Uh, we're not gonna stay in the harbor because of the floating docks will be extremely susceptible to wave action and uh, that causes some problems. As we awaited the storm and made plans for Hurricane Nora, we checked a few other big projects off of our list. We replaced our main halyard, various other weathered lines, and fixed the track and traveler car in the steering mechanism of our helm. Allie was able to get a few of her projects done as well. So, the main halyard needs to be changed. Uh, hold the mast up. And the boys are preparing to lift Dad up on the bosun's chair, which is scary. Here's the bosun's chair. Little strings, we don't drop That's a tool a down on our glass yeah. windows. Jasper. Yeah, yeah. Figuring out how to hoist them up. Go around this winch and over to that. Yeah, that might work. I'm Corey, this is Allie, and this is the Big Cheese, the Head Honcho, the Big Kahuna, Captain Bill. Together with our trusty sidekicks LP and Jasper, we quit our jobs, sold everything, and set out on a journey in search for land's beginning. Follow us as we vibe with Mother Nature one day at a time. This was the first time for any of us to go up the mast in the bosun's chair. Bill and I were both itching to go up, but he's the captain and it's captain's orders after all. To be honest, I'm afraid of heights, but the footage up there would have been worth it, I think. The C-1160 main halyard setup is different from many mono hauls we've sailed before. The standing part of the halyard is mounted with a large nut and bolt at the top of the mast. We only had two other lines available to hoist him up to the top. One is a main hoist, and the other is a safety line. Those were our topping lift and our screecher halyard. In fact, the screecher halyard stopped short of the top by six or so feet. So we rigged a fender under our boom, released the topping lift, and secured both the topping lift and screecher halyard to the bosun's chair. Then, I hoisted them up, inch by inch. Don't want to be a tired boy after that. A little sloth, all the way up, almost to the top. The whistling you hear in the background is the Mexican Navy bosun call. It's about 8 a.m., so I believe this is their all-hands-on-deck call.
people how your morning flight felt. Not as light as a bird, but when you're up there, you feel like you're a cannonball. So you're not going to fly away because you're not like a bird, or you're going to fall like a rock because you're a cannonball. You take the choice. Which one would you rather? How was it lifting up Peepaw's body into the tops of the mast? It would have been nicer if we had the electric winch, but... Good, it was, it was a good physical workout. workout for you this morning. Yeah, got a good sweat going. I really exerted myself, I know that. All right, so this is the old halyard and the old eye splice. Bill has already attached the other end of our new halyard with the new eye splice up to the top of the mast. So I just cut off this old eye splice on the old halyard. Now we're gonna attach the bitter end of the new halyard onto the end of the old halyard. And when we pull the old halyard through, it'll bring the new halyard through the mast and the rigging. All right, so I just whip stitched the old halyard to the new halyard, covered it with some electrical tape, and now we're gonna attempt to pull it through. to the top. So she just went all the way up, down through the mast, came through. Now she's right there. She's through. And that is how you put a new halyard on a C-1160. And the very last step in this puzzle was to cut off the new halyard from the old halyard. And then I gave it a good whip on the end so it wouldn't fray. And we got a new halyard. All right, we're out here replacing the davit lines because they're old and crispy and junky. So kind of same procedure as the halyard. Took the old eye splice off. Put a new one on through here. We just had to lift this guy up, pull the pin out, slip the new eye splice in. Then on the end of the old line, this is the new one. On the end of the old line, we just stitched on the new line and then pulled it through. So this davit's complete. Bill's just pulling this one through. So we have a little bit of a doozy here. In the spec sheet, it calls for an eight millimeter line. This is our door lift. So it attaches to the bottom of the door and that's what lifts it up into the ceiling here when we want these doors all the way open. But however, this line is a 10 millimeter line. If you look up in here, it's a little big for the pulley wheels. So we bought eight millimeter line but the previous owner, Ralph, was pretty smart, so we're not sure if he switched it to a 10 millimeter line for a reason. The only thing I can think of is maybe for the winch, it was easier and didn't slip as much, but I think we're just gonna go ahead and cut off the old 10 millimeter line, do a new eye splice with the eight millimeter line, and just like everything else, the halyard and the dinghy davits, splice them together and pull it all the way through. All right, so I cut off the old eye splice on the old door lift, put a new splice and whip on the handle and butt jointed the new line to the old line. Now I'm about to pull it through. Gotta help it right there because it's at a tight joint. down through these blocks and back to the winch. In a previous video, I mentioned an issue we had with the track and traveler car of our steering mechanism. There was a dangerous amount of play between the track and traveler car itself, enough that we feared the traveler car would hop off of the track. When we took a closer look, we noticed the car was mounted crooked, rubbing on the track and wearing it out. 
We sourced another track through Ronston, and this video shows you how we solved the issue. All right, so I got a 13 millimeter on the end of here. All right, that is awesome. Bushing. All right, that was sweet. All right, sweet. And that is the play that we're trying to get rid of. So I guess I can slide this off the track. Yeah, something was rubbing right here. And there are quite a few ball bearings missing. And if you look at this from straight on, you can see this side is a little higher than this side. And I think that was part of the issue of why it was rubbing so bad. The new track had to be cut down, re-drilled, and countersunk to fit the hardware it was previously mounted with. All right, so now our car is on there straight. I wanted to replace the Traveler car as well since it had a few spots of wear, but was unable to source one that would get to us in time. This was the most difficult part of the repair. The machining tolerances of this part were extremely tight, and it took me a while to align the port and starboard pins to their holes. There we go. There is still a little play in the car, but a lot less than the play we had before. I'm not even sure a new car would solve this. I wonder if this is the reason they switched the track and car system to be horizontal on the newer sea winds. Altogether, we are pleased with the result and can now head out worry-free of the car jumping off the track. All right, well, we fixed it. Today, I begin the last two of my sewing projects. This gal in a crispy white like this. And this gal in a mini version in brown. Earlier this week, I made a new pair of my clown pants because the previous ones didn't really fit well. And I made a crispy white pair of shorts to go with the shirt. Here we go. Mm -hmm.
As it turns out, our fears were unfounded as Hurricane Nora dissipated after moving onto land 150 miles south of us. Unfortunately, the Gulf Coast had its own hurricane, Ida. Our hearts and prayers go out to those affected by both hurricanes. If you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. If you'd like to help us out, check out our merch page in the description below, or at www.sailingmoondrifter.com.